We've been primarily dairy farmers our whole life. When you're born in the Gladstone family, part of your focus is to be milking cows. <laughs> fifth generation farmer. Our family came here in the early 1800s. Um, one valley over on Old Gladstone Hollow, then of course in time migrated to Gladstone Hollow. And of course here we live just off of Gladstone Hollow. It's the first time I've ever not lived on Gladstone Hollow my whole life. So when I hit 50, I told my wife I was going to retire, and so we sold the dairy. And at that time, we were starting to do a little heifer raising boarding for other farmers, and, and in the end, we were boarding 70, 80 heifers a year when there was more farmers, and those farmers came fewer and fewer all the time, so went the heifer numbers, and then we transitioned to heifers and beef, now to totally totally beef. We, we started out primarily with belted Galloways, moved the herd up to 160, 70, 80, 90 head. And a couple, three years ago, we decided to move into a little crossbreeding with British White Park. And so this year we had our first group of calves and we've got about 40 of them right now. And it looks like that's going to be a, a pretty good combination. <music> This farm is one of the first 10 pilot farms the watershed had, and the original plan was done in uh, May of 1995. Now we're currently on the 12th revision to the plan. It's one of the initial 10 pilot farms, first phase pilot farms. We were dairy. My mother actually milked in one barn. My wife and I milked in another barn. We always had two barns running. You know, it's like any, any farm on a side hill. There's always water problems someplace, you know, everything runs downhill and it runs to the brook and then of course it's heading on to New York City. The first BMPs back in 97 through 99 were related to the cropping. A riparian crep buffer was installed in 2002, was just re-enrolled in 2017 for another 10 years. The original grazing plan was done for the heifers back in 08. Some fencing and some water systems were installed with that grazing plan. Those plans were just updated last year for the beef herd to help facilitate that grazing. We have 25 BMPs that are slated to get done in 2021. Most of them are related to fencing, watering, crossings. Some are repairs to old BMPs that we have. The beef is just a totally different animal. But as we got the numbers up there, we were limited on pasture then it just turns into quite a mess, especially when it's year-round grazing. No buildings for them to be in, so they're just outside year-round. Where they graze is just a tremendous mess and a total concentration of manure in that immediate area. And then if it's close to a spring run or a brook where there's good runoff to the brook, and of course all those nutrients drop right in the water. So it was, it was a mess. <music> Behind us, these are newer buildings built in 2019 related to the beef feeding operation. The beef cows used to be fed across the valley on a site where there was no manure collection. He couldn't collect manure to spread. The runoff could get to the stream, so it's the kind of thing that we want to do to, to move them away from that. So we plan the whole system to different buildings. Okay, thank you for our third stop today. Welcome to the Gladstone Farms, owned by Bud Susan Gladstone. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out to the program, our partnering agencies, and everybody involved in making this program what it is today. The last year or two when we were milking, my wife got this idea of let's have a handful of beef cattle. So, uh, so here we are. <laughs> we took Bud on a little, Bud again, Susan on a tour of some other structures that were done in the watershed to get an idea of what 
would work for him and his management. Bud was quite involved in the whole process all along. You know, he came with sketches to us to help us try to formulate how we were going to make things work. The upper building is a bigger building and is sized for 50 to 60 cows. The smaller building is sized for approximately 40 to 50 wean calves and 20 steers and bulls. Uh, along with that, there's also manure storage in each building for about four to five months worth of manure. Well, the buildings themselves have been a tremendous asset as far as taking care of cattle. The benefit of the cattle having not to be outside in all kinds of weather. We calve year-round. It gives the calves a better area to uh, be born in. Next winter, we will not have calves being born in the winter months. It's very difficult when you have a year-round calving situation. For the survival rate of the calves being inside, it's, it's a tremendous help. Or having the manure that we didn't have any of before, now we can spread it, and thanks to WAC, with the purchase of a, a spreader that can handle that kind of manure, now allows us to get the manure on the meadows, it helps the production and the hay that we need for the cattle. We also sell quite a bit of hay too, so it works both ways. We sort of planned and designed it all at the same time, which is a little different than what we usually do. But before we really start, got into that, we were able to take Bud and Susan to three farms I think we went to that had relatively new structures built so they were able to see how they were operated. They each had different um, aspects to them. But we're continually learning what works best, what, what doesn't work, and where we can improve. Each year we, we always have something that we learn with a building. Here we found a few things we wanted to improve or modify. We were able to use our work crew, which is our watershed investigation and repair crew that was able to come out and fix some of those things. We put some uh, safety fence around the manure storages. We were able to put some better wind protection on the doors. Also put the feed rail up on the upper barn, but was having some problems with them sneaking out through the bars, which wasn't a super big problem. It was when they were in the in the wrong size where they get caught in those bars, which was the biggest problem there. So we were able to do those fairly minor, but pretty good uh, kind of modifications right in house, and that, which works out quite well for us. The bar is to hopefully prevent, which I think it is because only two calves so far have been out. And normally it would have been 10 a day <laughs> or more. <laughs> we learned as we go, we put something that was new that we hadn't really tried before and we didn't get it quite right. So we just, we, we modified it some and we think we've got a better better outcome with it now. Since this has been built, we've brought at least two farms here to look at, at your, your project. So what we're trying to do is to get the folks out and see the practices once they're built and then they can sort of figure out what they like, what they don't like, and we can adjust from there. We've done quite a few nutrient management plans and plan updates here on the farm. And our, our main goal of nutrient management planning is really to help ensure that the nutrients spread across these farm fields are done so in a way that helps maximize plant uptake and plant use efficiency and helps crop production and helps minimize water quality concerns associated with surface runoff and erosion. And so this storage that was put in place here has really been a huge benefit to help us achieving those goals on many levels. One level being soil fertility. Bud was just soil sampled a couple years ago and um, those soil samples came back that a lot of his fields were low in fertility. So having the ability to collect and capture and spread these nutrients on his hay fields will really help his crop production and his homegrown forage. Have you seen an increase in your hay crop production since been aiming to spread? Uh, a little bit. It's surprising uh, the first year you do see, see a difference already. Because we haven't had manure on our farm for so long or on the fields because the cattle have been outside, we went over most fields with a light coating just to get something on them. And this year we tried to do it a little heavier. And so with this year's manure that we got, we start to stack now. There's fields further away we're hoping to get this this spring. Typically in the winter time or early spring when the ground is um, snow covered or frozen or completely saturated, those are the times when the manure can't have contact with the soil and the risk for runoff is greatest. So being able to save this manure up and spread it on the ground during the growing season when it has that soil contact and when plants are actively growing to take up those nutrients um, really helps protect the water quality as well.
from a manure distribution standpoint, fields that he couldn't get to because of road conditions or field access issues um, on steeper slopes. Now having the storage and being able to strategically plan and time um, when he can get his manure on those fields that are further away will again really help his um, crop production. Another part of the nutrient management planning process is a manure spreader calibration. This helps us determine the maximum load allowance per field in the plan. How that process works is we had Bud driving the tractor with the spreader behind him and we had a set of road scales. The spreader had a full load of manure and so we measured the weight of each tire on each axle with the spreader full. He went and spread the manure and then we did the same thing with the spreader empty. And so the difference between that kind of gave us the amount of manure that he spreads in a typical load, which we calculated was around seven tons in that spreader. We measured the swath of manure spread. That allowed us to figure out the rate per acre that he typically spreads. Usually in our nutrient management plans, we're recommending around 15 tons per acre for a hay crop field. Spreading, you know, right in line with what we would be recommending to the fact that we take soil samples to get the amount of nutrients that are already present in the soil. Uh, we also take a manure sample so that we can figure out the amount of nutrients that are available in the manure that he is adding to the soil. And then all of that just kind of helps us make sure that we're ensuring water quality protection, that the, the fields aren't becoming oversaturated nutrients and that we don't need to put any restrictions on the rates that he's applying or the times of year that he can spread. The nutrient management plan is one of the many critical components of WAC. We purchased loader eligible expense. We purchased a grapple. But now our primary focus with the funds from nutrient management will be line. Farmers enrolled in the nutrient management credit program keep record of all of their manure management. They turn in those records annually. We as planners tally these records and then we actually forward them on to a peer review. So a group of farmers is actually the one that looks at these records and they're the ones to approve these nutrient management credit balances. What Bud was referring to are eligible expenses that these nutrient management credit awards can go towards. Manure equipment, custom manure services, machine repairs. Bud, you've been in the program for almost 10 years and you've earned almost $47,000 in nutrient management credit. Cover crop expenses has been added in it recently. Lime purchasing and spreading. Just being part of the WAC program altogether is a tremendous benefit to a farm in the watershed. We have a freezer trade. You know, we sell to sometimes a couple restaurants, depending on, you know, right now the restaurant businesses are a little, past year, a little slow. At times we'll send out a bunch of feeders. We try to primarily work on a freezer trade business. been involved in watershed programs for years. Every single person that we deal with and have dealt with over the years, um, they've just been a tremendous help to us on our farm. We can't say enough good things about them. Um, it just, uh, we're so thankful to, to, to partner with them and do what we've done. We're in a good position right now. My wife is going to retire next year, which will give her more time to help at home, which is great. I can say we are in a good position.